Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here in the workshop. In the last video in my little Rebuilding Athena's Rudder series, I just finished vacuum infusing the first half of Athena's new rudder. This should be fully cured by now, so we can go ahead and pull the part out of the mold in a little bit. First, I would like to get the second half of the rudder set up for infusion. Yesterday, I cut and trimmed all of the pieces of glass. With all of the glass trimmed, the next step is to add peel ply, infusion mesh with release film, and then seal everything up with some vacuum film. Because the first half is fully cured, I can go ahead and remove all of the clamps, which I need for the second half. Yep, this looks very much fully cured. I am so excited to open this up to see how it turned out, but uh, for now, let's just set it aside. In the last video in this little series, I showed a time lapse of me adding the peel ply, the infusion mesh, and sealing everything up, but there were a couple of comments asking for a little bit more detail. There really isn't a lot to this part of the process, but uh, let's go ahead and start by adding the peel ply. The reason for the peel ply is because I need to bond the foam core that's going to be here inside the rudder to this shell. And by adding the peel ply, I don't have to do any sanding. The one annoying thing about peel ply is the fact that it does not conform well to shapes. Or that is to say, it conforms very well to shapes when it's only in one dimension. But for instance, in this corner here, and also down here, we're going to have some issues. To combat that annoying feature of peel ply, I've added a few relief cuts here and here so that the peel ply lies nice and flat. Just like in the last video, I'm going to stop the mesh short about 5 or 10 centimeters from the edge of the laminate. Something like this should work, or at least it did the last time around. Now, the reason for the release film on the back of the mesh is so that it's easier to remove the mesh so it doesn't get stuck to the peel ply. The release film is basically just some plastic with a bunch of holes in it. As you can see, I've gone ahead and added two strips of vacuum tape. You only really need one strip, but I'm still very much new at this whole vacuum infusion thing, and I figured double the tape double the chances of sealing any leaks. I've also gone ahead and added the spiral tubing here on the inlet side of the mold. The resin is gonna flow in this direction. So let's get this flipped around and add some more spiral tubing. Something like this. There was a brief moment of sheer terror when I realized how little of this vacuum hose I've got left. I think it's enough, but it's gonna be tight. To get this tea onto these hoses, I am boiling some water so they can heat these up. That way they become just a little bit more flexible. This would of course be a lot easier with some kind of heat gun, but I don't have one here at the workshop, so this will have to do. And there we go. Let's go ahead and add the vacuum hose here on the inlet side of things. And uh, this looks to be roughly in the middle. Next up, we need to get everything sealed up with some vacuum film. In the last video, I made the mistake of not putting in enough pleats, or at least not pleats in the right locations. So let's see if we can't fix that this time around. Oh, dang it. I don't think this is gonna be big enough for me to put in all the pleats I want. So uh, we might have a repeat of what happened in the last video. I know for sure that I want to pleat here in the middle so that the film can conform to this hump over here. So let's put that in first. Seeing as I sacrificed a lot of the length to get this big pleat here in the middle, I now have to put in the pleats on either end on this side. I don't think this is ideal, but I just don't really have any other options. Ah! 
Uh, <laughs> I think I will name this method the phone book method. That is when you don't know what the heck you're doing and you just put in so many pleats that your bag starts to resemble a freaking phone book. But yeah, this should work, I guess. Let's switch on the pump and uh, get this thing airtight. Fingers crossed. If I turn off the pump for a little bit, you should be able to hear a hissing sound from somewhere around here. So now it's just a matter of finding the leak. Oh, there we go. Well, after copious amounts of fiddling about, it looks like we're finally airtight. As you might have noticed in the time lapse, I did have a couple of tiny leaks. I don't know if that's going to matter, but uh, we'll find out tomorrow. For now, we'll just tuck this guy in and give him a nice boost of heat. And that means we can finally tear into this guy. I am excited. Okay, that vacuum tape is really well on there, so let's just cut a hole in this instead. <laughs> well, okay, I was kind of expecting the bag to expand, but that didn't happen. Wow. The mesh is pretty easy to remove with the release film on there. For now, I'll just leave the peel ply on here so I don't contaminate the surface. Let's see if we can persuade the rudder half to vacate his cozy mold. I guess having a little bit more flex in the mold would have been nice now. <laughs> One absolutely perfect rudder half. This is without any doubt the best piece of laminate aboard Athena. Holy smokes, this thing is so nice. If there ever was a 10 on the spiffiness scale, then this is it. Of course, that scale goes to 11. And uh, there's a reason why this is not an 11. Remember that little bit of bridging I had here because I didn't put in enough pleats? Well, this is the result. I mean, this is easily fixable with a tiny bit of fairing compound, but yeah, apparently that is why you don't want bridging. Hey guys, it is a few days later. I am so pleased with how that first half of the rudder turned out. I am slightly less optimistic about the second half. I think it might not be usable. I mentioned there was a small leak and apparently this is what happens when you have a small leak when you're doing vacuum infusion. I did my very best to seal up any leaks, but I must have missed some. And as you can see up here, the laminate looks very white. This does not look healthy. It is of course very annoying to potentially have to remake this side of the rudder, but that is just the cost of learning new skills. 
And as I've always said, one of my favorite parts about DIY is learning new skills. So yeah, this is just what happens. But well, let's get her open up and uh, see how bad the damage really is. Yep, this looks pretty horrible. Let me go ahead and get this thing out of the mold and then we can compare the two halves. From a little bit of a distance, there might not be much of a difference between the two halves. That one is the good one and that one is the bad one. And you might be able to see it's kind of white in this area. If we move a little bit closer, you can see the difference between what's relatively healthy laminate back here and then the uh, not so nice stuff. As you can see, this stuff is not very strong. It's filled with little air bubbles and just yuck. You can easily pull apart the separate layers of fiberglass here. So yeah, this is pure garbage. There is no way I am going to be able to use this part. <clears throat> For helvete satan deus! Ah, thusly vented. Like I said, that is just the cost of doing business. Just like everybody else, I make mistakes from time to time and vacuum infusion is known for being a little bit of a uh, fickled uh, <clears throat> lady. Clearly I have to make another one of these, but I'm actually leaving in a few hours to go spend two weeks with my girlfriend Ava, so that'll have to wait until I get back. And I think what I'll do is I'll continue working on the first half here on camera, get some foam in there and get the rudder stuck in there. And then behind the scenes, I'll go ahead and make another one of these. I don't know how interesting you guys find vacuum infusion. I find it pretty fascinating, but I don't want to overdo it because I'm sure it's not for everyone. And there might also be some vacuum infusion aboard Athena this coming summer. So yeah, I think the second attempt at the second half is going to be off camera. In the last video, I don't think I mentioned why I want to use vacuum infusion, because as you've seen, it's a little bit of a fiddly process, but there are actually some pretty cool upsides to it. For one, you don't really mess around with the uncured epoxy a lot. You just kind of have it sitting in a bucket there and it just takes care of itself. Whereas when you're laying up stuff by hand, it kind of tends to go everywhere, like on the table, on your clothing, on the floor, just everywhere. Sure, there are some consumables that you can't reuse. This is basically just garbage, but you're using a lot less epoxy. Well, that is, of course, if you know how much to mix, because as you can see, I had a little bit left over. But yeah, epoxy is expensive and using less of it is good. Also, you end up with a laminate that's a lot higher quality than anything you could lay up by hand. The two are kind of tied together because this laminate has the perfect amount of resin, which is less than you'd be able to use when laying it up by hand. So it means it's stronger and cheaper. For these rudder shells, of course, I don't really need to use vacuum infusion, but given the fact that the laminate is going to be higher quality and it's going to be a little bit cheaper in epoxy, and it's a fun technique I hadn't tried before, I figured it'd be worth it to give it a shot. So there we go, a little bit of a mixed experience with vacuum infusion this time around. Now, I know this video is a little bit shorter than usual, but I wanted to make sure to get something out there to show you that first rudder half, because I know a lot of you guys were waiting for that. It is time for me to vacate the shop and frantically start throwing stuff into a bag, because I am running very late. But uh, yeah, next weekend's video is already pre-recorded, so that's all taken care of. Now that video, however, is going to be a little bit special. That is my initial experiments with vacuum infusion, but that's not the real purpose of that video. There's a little bit of a surprise in the end of the video, but uh, you guys will see next week. So uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!